What is going on guys, Tempo here, and if you've watched pretty much any of my previous videos, you'll know this channel focuses on competitive COD. Today though, I'm starting a new mini-series as to explain what I like to call the Noob Complex, or the Call of Duty Delusion. What is this delusion? Why do COD devs try so hard to make people feel this way? That's what I'm here to answer. Some videos in this series will also be a precursor to my other mini-series I'm making on why competitive COD is becoming worse, as there is quite a bit of an overlap between competitive and casual. Like so many other things in COD, specialists are a necessary evil. They are here not to add more variety to the game, but instead to let noobs get easy kills. In every previous Call of Duty, there has been some sort of mechanism introduced with a basic preface of making the game addictive for new players. I'm talking about things like death streaks, quick scoping, field order, score based matchmaking, etc. Shivat's not fair, but put in place to make the game fun for noobs, to make them feel like they aren't that bad. There are, of course, many different factors put in place to aid noobs and balance the playing field, but those were just some memorable examples. Specialists really do take minimal skill to use. Let's be honest, anyone with two functional thumbs could use one of their abilities to at least get one or two kills. If you get stunned by Heatwave, you're fucked. If you get hit by a Hive, you're fucked. And the list goes on. I could go through every single specialist and give you a scenario where you don't stand a chance. The thing is though, I don't necessarily disagree with you having no chance to survive versus a specialist character. You don't see me complaining about score streaks being too strong. On the contrary, I would like them to be better. The thing is though, that most Specialists, you don't need to earn them. You can just sit in a corner and wait for it, and that's what pisses me off. The fact that when I'm on a 10 kill streak, some little cunt can come out of the woodworks and fry me with their heat wave, no skill involved, it just pisses me off. When I talk about a necessary evil here, I'm talking about the necessity to sacrifice a fair playing system in order to please the community of players that aren't good. The issue that arises is that the game developers need to make the game fun for everyone. And if that means making it unfair, so fucking be it. A little bit like participation awards, they want to give everyone their minimum dose of kills. To better understand the importance of specialists, we must take a look at what Call of Duty developers are doing when they introduce mechanisms like this. They are catering to less experienced players. It sucks to die five times in a row, so why not have death streaks? It sucks to play against COD veterans, so why not have score-based matchmaking? The list goes on, and as a wise man once said, for every kill, there is a death. And what fun is it to continuously die? You want to be on a kill streak, not on a death streak. But as we mentioned previously, for every kill, there is a death. So for every time you go fucking mental on these kids and get a Moab, there are people on the receiving end, and it sucks to be them. There are really only two ways of solving this problem, in my eyes. Either A, introduce AI or bots into the game like Titanfall does, or B, introduce game mechanics to balance the playing field. Currently, Call of Duty is doing both of these things. Zombies mode is pretty much just a bunch of bots running at you. Even in COD games that didn't have zombies in them, there's been some sort of you versus bot mode, whether it be in campaign, combat training, or custom games with bots. But all of these modes, excluding the campaign of course, are nowhere near as popular as pubs. You see, the vast majority of people would rather play against other real people than mindless drones. Beasting and feasting against a bunch of bots means nothing, because they aren't real. They don't care. For most people, it isn't enough you win. You have to hurt the other player, humiliate them and degrade them because it's that that will ultimately satisfy your first for victory. To truly feel like a champ, you need to truly feel like everyone is beneath you and this is where the new complex comes into play. Of course, I don't want this video to drag on, so that's a story for another time. Like it or not though, for Call of Duty to survive, it must cater to new players. But it is this catering to new players, this sense that something's not right, something's not fair, that chases away your original fan base. The guys that have been here since the beginning, that have stuck through it all, that are now just fed up with the bullshit. It's a vicious fucking cycle. For every new player that demands an easy way to get kills, there is an old player that demands to play on an even playing field. What ends up happening is that more people leave than are introduced. 
This is the big issue that Plan B, the unfair balancing mechanics, introduces into the game. There are countless things in Call of Duty that can be considered unfair. Usually it's stuff like C4 or those sorts of explosives that get the blame, should a typical camper would use. But behind all of this, behind the shotguns, the snipers and LMGs, there's a more sinister side that is much harder to see through. I'm talking about the actual game mechanics. Things like lag compensation favoring high ping players too much, broken servers, thrust jumping, and score based matchmaking. Rest assured though, I will cover these things in this series. But you see, it's, it's a feeling that you might have that something's unfair, you know? You could have sworn you died behind the corner, but the kill cam shows he hit a last second shot at you just before you dove for cover. These are the things that are used to give an advantage to good players and bad players. Although, in these situations, the good players don't need an advantage, whereas the bad players do, ultimately hindering the better player. These are the things hidden in the background of the game that make the gaming experience worse for everyone smart enough to realize what's going on. And typically, it's the more experienced players that realize this first. The rest are stuck complaining about explosives and OP HCXDs. Coming back to this vicious circle of mine where more people are quitting COD than joining, the big problem that COD developers face is to keep all the veteran players. So how do they reduce the hidden gameplay mechanics that disadvantage good players while at the same time satisfying bad players giving them free kills? Specialists of course! Whoever thought of this genius idea should be fucking commended. Because if it wasn't for specialists, COD would be repeating the same shit it's always done with the same amount of intensity. I don't know if you've realized this or not, but all of a sudden, the netcode's gotten better. There are more dedicated servers, there's been a reduction in the heavily implemented lag compensation. Now, this might be a placebo effect, so don't take my word for it. But I certainly do feel like things have gotten better. And it's not because Activision was like, oh shit, I didn't realize the game was this broken, I'm sorry, let me fix that. No, it's because there must always be a balance. A balance between how much the game is based on luck and how much is based on skill. Without luck, the implementation of, again, things like score-based matchmaking and a worse netcode, lesser skilled players don't enjoy themselves and without any skill needed, the better players have no motivation to play. The noobs have no motivation to get better. Specialists give noobs the ability to get some free kills and for experienced players to go off. It's unfair the way they do it, but I accept it. I realize that there's only so much Activision will be ready to do and try and make the game fair, while at the same time making it fun for noobs. I can assure you though that things like score-based matchmaking and unfair lag cub won't leave the game completely until they find a solution to make the game just enough skilled and just enough luck to satisfy both noobs and good players. I hope you've come to realize as this video comes to an end that it doesn't have to be specialists we have in the next Call of Duty. It could be anything that gives you the illusion you are a good player, because you get a double kill with it, when in reality everyone else is getting double kills with it, rendering your performance not impressive at all. To me this is really saddening and I feel like I'm contradicting my whole message when I say shit like this, but sometimes things never change and you've got to accept the best worst situation. You know, I remember when I was a noob on Black Ops 2, I was carrying over all my newbie techniques from Modern Warfare 3 and I would have stayed that way if it weren't for better players getting godlike score streaks on me. I remember talking to some guy who'd gone a triple swarm during the game and I asked him, how do you get so many swarms? His answer was that he played a lot and improved on all aspects of the game. I know the vast majority of COD players are people who just want to chill and enjoy themselves and play a couple games after school or work. But what happened to improving? I don't see any more tutorials on how to get the high score streaks. Who even uses the mothership? There's absolutely no drive for people to improve on COD nowadays. If there was, I know people would accept fair deaths. I know people would not call others hackers, but instead try to be as good as them. And I know COD wouldn't have to use backdoor scrubby techniques like they do now. As I continue into this series on, you know, the Call of Duty delusion, I'll be coming back to this basic preface. 
things are more complicated than they look, and I'll certainly come back to this main point. That will ultimately be the demise of Call of Duty, and which will set back the first person genre back years. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the low learning curve in Call of Duty. Incidentally, my next video in this series will be on easy kills in COD, kind of like a continuation to this video, or if you'd like another chapter in this playlist of videos. Now, I will also uh, make a separate version of this series, as I explained it, uh, in the beginning of the videos, for uh, competitive Call of Duty. As a lot of things that come from public games and from you know the casual aspect of Call of Duty do carry on to the competitive side, and I really want to focus um, with that series on why this is also affecting competitive. Um, so, as usual guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, don't forget to leave a like, and I'll see you in my next video. I hope this video wasn't too cluttered or anything like that, if you do have any questions, I'll be more than glad to answer them in uh, the comment section below.